the next one is m as i have mentioned before just like rpm m would also have you know m install m remove m upgrade uh, we can perform all all kinds of operations using m uh, the only difference is uh, m will have the configuration file for it okay where we we define you know uh, where uh, m should go and fetch the rpm we, we define the repository you know from where m can go and download all the rpm on its own okay usually uh, if you have a red, red hat uh, if you have this red hat license they will provide you the uh, red hat you know this repository or you can you can keep a repository in your company itself uh, and that location must be specified it, it must be specified in the configuration file from where you will go and fetch it okay so this is a, this is the directory structure epcm dot repos dot p, where we have multiple repository files that are created. You can have multiple repositories. So if uh, yum by default will follow the order, it will search for first repository if not available. It will search for other repositories as well. So you can have multiple repositories. You just have to configure it. So these are some of the arguments. You can, you know, you can, you can configure the repository and make it available. You can, you can, you know, or you can disable it or enable it, but you can, you know, have a prior configuration. And these are some of the checks, you know, some of, some packages. So it's not like every package you download from the internet uh, will will have this signature. That means which ensures that this package is safe. Uh, so that you know, if you have your own Linux prop, and you simply do the yum install, it might search the repositories online, and it will fetch from some location, and will try to install the package. But if you if you want to ensure that whatever you install is safe, we can have this GPG checks enabled in our system. All right, <coughs> and the next one is uh, setting up a repository. Okay, so in order to set up a repository, what we need to do is we need to install this package first, uh, that is uh, create repository, and then we need to run this command. Uh, then it will set up set up the initial repository first. Okay, so uh, it's pretty simple setting up of the repository. So it's like uh, creating a, uh, an empty container. Okay, that's what uh, the create repository command will do. Then what you can do is see well, at the time of installation process, you will get to see lot of packages which are present in your uh, CD or DVD. Okay, but we will not install all the packages. We will install some basic packages, and on a need basis, we go with the installation of the rest of the packages. So when we want to install at a later point of time, uh, so rather than you know uh, downloading it or copying it from somewhere, what we can do is. Uh, we can create our own repository and copy these packages, all the packages which are present in your drive to that location. So creating a repository, we are creating our own repository and copy all the packages to that repository. And then this is how we configure the yum repository, the local yum repository. Okay. So first install this, it creates a container, copy all the RPMs to that container. All right. Once you have done, uh, you create this. So uh, create repo hyphen d. So what happens is it will create all the metadata and the corresponding information. Okay. So once this is done, what you can do is you can clear the cached ones. Okay. And then we can list all the packages that are available in the repository. And whenever you say yum install a particular package, it will go and fetch that package from your local repository. So these are all the Arguments that are available along with yum. So when we say yum install FTP, it will go and you know dependence is resolved. It will pull the packages. Okay. So rather than you know pointing your repository to some location outside, so you can have your own local. If you are not connected to internet, you want to install a package, and uh, if it is available, right? If it is readily available. Rather than copying it from other stores, what you can do is you can create a repository along with your uh, operating system 
uh, you'll get all the all the packages. You can keep all the packages in the repository and simply use the yum command to install the package. Automatically, the installation will happen. So manually, you will not have to. Right. As a, I mean, when you install your operating system, I mean, as a part of your operating system, you will have the all all the set of packages available for you. So you can copy all those packages and you know keep it in a uh, create a repository rather than installing everything. Uh, in the first time itself, so on a need basis, you can uh, keep un unnecessary packages. You can you can keep it in your repository and install at a later point of time when you have a need. All right, uh, or or you take uh, another example. Okay, uh, say uh, you're part of an organization rather than you know allowing people to download the packages from outside. Or uh, from other repositories, you can maintain a repository inside inside your organization, to which you know all the Linux systems can be pointed to that repository, so that people will start installing the packages from the local repository rather than uh, going and pulling the packages from some from some other repository. So I mean, it it all depends on a need basis, but at least you will get to know that okay, this is the process, this is the package I need to install. This is how I create a local container or local repository. This is where I can keep my packages. So, you know, it it is very easy, right? Doing and going forward, when you start using yum command, you'll understand. Simply yum install a particular command, automatically pulls the dependencies. So what I would suggest is first try using an rpm command. Get some open source. Uh, uh, I'll tell you some utilities which may not be available by default. So try using rpm. It will list the dependencies. Because I have faced such uh, scenarios where it will list a dependency. I have downloaded the dependency. Again, it will ask another dependency for the dependency itself. So sometimes you know it it goes on asking and asking. So you will get irritated downloading dependencies and installing. So yum would really help you. So if you have a repository set up like that, so simply using yum will pull the dependencies and it will install it. It's just a matter of seconds. So. Yeah, um, update command. All are same. Like RPM, you can you can use them. So it will simply pull and install everything. Okay, here uh, there is an example uh, service given here. All right, this is all about uh, creating a different repository. Okay, let's go through this. So we have seen all the arguments of yum so far, right? So <coughs> the next thing is, so you have created a repository. So we can enable a HTTP service on top of that repository. So when I say HTTP service, what happens is, uh, okay, see this page. So when you hit that uh, particular service, you'll get to see all the packages in this. So like. You wanted to know where I can use the uh, RPM command. You can download these individual packages. So this is where a HTTP service would be helpful for you. So we'll see how to uh, configure a HTTP service. So though in, though understanding service, this is uh, it's too early to uh, start uh, knowing about service, but uh, we'll go through some some basic. Options. I'll tell you how to, what exactly this is about. So, if you have seen here, uh, HTTP service. That means you have you have all your RPM located at some at some location. Okay, HTTP as you know, it's a protocol in which we connect to that location. We list everything whatever is present over there. So, we are trying to access this RPM over HTTP service. Okay, so. HTTP a server or a service and HTTP D is the underlying daemon. Okay, so uh, I'll tell you. Uh, uh, let me tell you one one uh, this workflow kind of thing. So whenever it comes to a service, so by default we'll be following a few steps. Okay, the first step any kind of service that we are going to install uh, that we're going to see uh, in the future modules about the installation and configuration part configuring services okay so starting with http any service so first of all the first thing is what is the service so understanding uh, what it does 
primary ring okay this is a surface uh, for example cups okay it's a printing surface it helps to uh, it helps to connect your system to the printers in your network and using which you can you can do print okay so just having an understanding of what the service is the next important thing is what are the packages involved okay so uh, for this you may not uh, there are two ways either you you remember uh, the set of packages or you can simply you know uh, do yum install cups okay so 99% it will 99% of the time it will pull the packages all the corresponding packages that are associated with the cup service okay so it will list all the packages along with the different entries you install the service once you have installed the service the next step is you need to uh, configure the service okay check the status using etc dot d cups status stop so we have installed it we haven't started it then what we do there are configuration files associated with the service okay so we need to know where these configuration files are present okay then we go to the corresponding configuration file make the changes once you have made the changes we start the service okay now the service is started then we enable the service in that particular run level so that the next time we start the service along with the system other processes the service also gets started okay so this is the server configuration okay then we will see the client configuration so how to configure your client which makes use of your service so basically two things server and a client so we configure the server which serves the client the, server, the clients if, if at all there is some configuration needed from the client side as well we will see uh, similarly uh, what is the client package what exactly client does what kind of a service it gets from the server how to install it and how to make use of the service so this flow is the same i want i will keep repeating this uh, with every service that we do so what is the service what is the important what is the configuration what changes you have to make how to enable the service how to enable it permanently and then what is the client how we make use of it okay so now uh, we have started the http service so yum info httpd so it will uh, give you all the information okay see here uh, yum install httpd star automatically as i said it will list all the packages corresponding to http service all right so uh, once we have uh, installed that service what happens is okay so okay uh, i'll do one thing since we are running out of time i'll just whatever flow i talked about we'll see that flow and i'll i'll explain more details in the next session okay so this service first step uh, m uh, install http to start so we have installed the service okay the next step is there is a configuration file corresponding to http the location is etc httpd con httpd.com this is the configuration file corresponding to that service all right so we go to the con uh, we go to this service by default every service listens at a particular port that means by default every server will respond to the client requests at a default port for http it is easy and it is also possible to change the default port okay so here what we do is we just open the configuration file we make some basic changes in the configuration file we define that you know uh, so this is the port number or these are some of the other files with respect to the service okay so once that is done okay so here we'll uh, see http service means we are hosting some uh, web pages here all right so we will say that this is the folder where i'm going to keep my html file or this is the folder where i'm going to uh, keep my you know other scripts which will get executed when this web page is destroyed and then we define some basic configuration we put some restrictions that these users can only see my page these are not allowed or these groups can see my pages like that we we set up some restrictions so once that is done what we do is we uh, you know permission we haven't seen this so far we give uh, permissions to that repository you know, uh, who all can you know, modify the 
folders are fine. Once that is done, we have started the service. Service HTTP restart. Okay. Now the service is up and running. So once the service is up, so this is the host on which we have installed the service, followed by C and D. So this is the folder where my uh, my HTML files or some content, whatever I want to store, I've stored the content in that location. So once the service is up and running, if you hit that location, you will get to see all the files that I have uh, copied to that location. Okay. So this is how. So if if you have users in your network, even your users, if you have given access to them, they can hit this link and they can download the archive. So basically, uh, what you are doing is, here you have created a shared folder and you have kept everything in that and this can be accessible by other users in your network. So this is one kind of uh, service that is HTTP service, alright. So again next what you can do is, see this is uh, how you manually download it. You can access the service and you manually download an RPM and install it. Now what you can do is, you can configure yum, alright, inside the yum dot yum.repos.t uh, you can create a configuration file and say that uh, yum can query this HTTP service and install install the packages. Whatever packages it wants, you won't get it from this HTTP service. It will be available in this location, alright. So HTTP basically, that is the service it provides to yum. Okay, so once that is done, yum, uh, clean all, it cleans the cache and all and then, so every time you modify something, you need to, you know, refresh it so that it pulls the latest configuration. So once that is done, you can, you know, list and see all the list of uh, packages that are available in your service. 